All right, let's go ahead and start and go to number four. I'm sorry, 505. That is what I chose, right? Okay, 505. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you again that we can come together and meet to hear your, from your word, hear you as you speak to us. Lord, I pray that all we do today, tonight, would bring honor to you. Uh, help us to see uh, what you want for us tonight in your word. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go to our, uh, do the new memory verse. John chapter 15. Verse number six. Ready? Oh, go ahead and look it up. I know we haven't memorized it yet. Do you need it? No, you have it right there, yeah. All right, let's say it together. John 15, 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. John 15, 6. All right, let's go again to our songbooks and go to number 334. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. 
sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. No need of the sunlight in heaven, we're told. The light of the world is Jesus. The Lamb is the light in the city of gold. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light is shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Number 365. Number 391. and obey. 
Trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil He doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed. but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who will trust and obey. trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or we'll walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do, where He sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. and obey. Amen. Owen, thank you. Good job. All right, let's go to our Bibles and go to Genesis chapter 41. Owen was up here looking at my notes and he, he says, oh, I'm spoiling it for you because he read all my notes and now he knows the, knows the message so he can just sit and sleep. No, he didn't. <laughs> What's that? Have him, Have him preach. There you go. <laughs> so I, I was going to... Um, where did it, He read this. And I said, I'm, what I'm going to do is put his name here in the beginning. Owen, life is not a, all about you. Okay? No, that's the, the first sentence. Life is not all about us. We looked at that a little bit this morning. And uh, we want to see tonight that uh, God works in ways, and, and we, we know it, we, a lot of things we know, we don't dwell on, we don't think about so much. But I think we all know that uh, as, as something happens in our life, whether it's good or bad, God has worked it out to that point. And in working whatever it is out, to, for you to experience, God has been working in many other people, working it out to bring you to this point. And so God works in others for you, and God works in you for others. And you might not even know it. And so we want to see today, as we look at, at Genesis chapter 41, we're going to see, we recognize, that we know the story of Joseph and his brothers, and how that, uh, even as you look at the end of the book of Genesis, and you see how the brothers reacted to Joseph, uh, Joseph points out to them, listen, God was working things out in you to bring you to this point. Now, he was working through them for Joseph to do what Joseph did in order to bring them to that point. And so, he points out to the, the brothers, you know, God's been working all along, and it wasn't just because of your hatred. He didn't say it that way to them, but he, he says it wasn't you who did it. 
God worked it out for this to be good. So we see Joseph, as we look at uh, what uh, the account here, uh, we see that he is a, a good example of somebody that, that seems to have many gifts and talents, seems to be destined for leadership, or he's a good leader. But we have to understand that, that at this point, when we, what we see here in, in this account, it didn't just happen to Joseph. It didn't, it wasn't a natural thing for Joseph. God brought him to this point and God developed his character through his life. Not just all of a sudden Joseph is, is, um, has wisdom. So we might have and people might have talents and uh, uh, gifts but character is something that God develops in people. People are not born with um, a godly character. And so, so in order to have a godly character, God has to develop that. And so we let God work. And sometimes, many times, He uses others and different situations. So look at Genesis chapter 41. I'm just going to read verses 1 through 8. And then we'll uh, go on here. Verse number 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed. And they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept. So he w awakened out of that first sleep, right? That first dream. That probably it, uh, like it would be a nightmare and you might wake up out of a nightmare. And as you go back to sleep, sometimes you might go right back into the same nightmare. Uh, apparently, uh, the Pharaoh went back to sleep, but he didn't go to the same nightmare. He went to a similar one. And so he went back to sleep, verse 5. And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. These are different kind of corn than we talked about this morning, right? Remember what I said? One ear of corn usually. Here he got, has seven on one stalk rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof, and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this account. We thank you for what we know happens, but Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom as we look at this uh, account of Joseph and Pharaoh and all that goes on, that you would give us wisdom and understanding, help us to learn and grow as we hear from you. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So here it says in verse number eight that uh, Pharaoh told the wise men the dream. You remember in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar uh, dreamed a dream. And when he woke up, uh, we don't know if he was testing the uh, magicians or uh, maybe he forgot the dream, really. But he says, I'm not going to tell you what the dream was or I can't tell you what the dream was. I want you to tell me the dream so I know that your interpretation is right. Well, here he tells them, he actually tells them the dream. But the, the magicians, instead of making something up, they couldn't interpret it. They didn't know what was happening in the dream. And I believe God held them back in two ways. So number one, they couldn't interpret the dream. He just kept them from knowing the interpretation. But it was more likely that he just kept their mouths shut. 
said, I'm not going to allow you to even make up something here because God was in the process of uh, bringing Jacob and his family to Egypt someday. But here he's preparing the way and he's going to bring Joseph to Pharaoh in order to interpret the dream. And so God is working in the uh, magicians and Pharaoh. He works in Pharaoh, gave him the dreams, and he works in the magicians by not interpreting the dream. If they had made up something, would Pharaoh have called for Joseph? Would the butler even have thought about Joseph? No, the butler, look at verse 9, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. I remember two years ago, I was released from prison, and he tells Pharaoh all the account here. And so God used the butler in this occasion. Again, the reason God is, is doing this, and we, we, we don't, when we see all of the things that happen, whether it's the uh, Joseph's brothers or um, Joseph or the butler or Potiphar or Pharaoh and the wise men and the magicians, all of these people, everything working together is because of one reason, one ultimate reason, I believe, and it's because of God's promises. God promised to Abraham that, you know, he, First, he promised that to Abraham that his people, his descendants, would go into a bondage for 400 years. He told Abraham that was going to happen. And here, they're not in bondage yet. But he's working it out for that. Go back to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, and uh, look at verse number 5. And he, God, brought him, Abraham, forth abroad and said, Look, I didn't, by the way, God's not written in my Bible, and Abraham's not written in my Bible. I'm just telling you what he and him <laughs> was talking about. And look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Okay, keep that in mind. Abraham believed in the Lord, put his faith in God, and God applied God's righteousness to Abraham. And here's where we see that. Uh, verse number 7, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace, and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So here is a, a covenant that God made with Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. And here God makes the promises that he is going to 
uh, send Abraham's descendants into uh, bondage. He doesn't tell him where. He doesn't tell him who, uh, what nation will uh, be the one that brings them into bondage. But he made these promises to Abraham. And so God, because he cannot lie, has to fulfill his promise. It's just natural for God to do what he says he's going to do. And he works this out. So he makes these promises to God, or to Abram, and so we need to know and understand what what, what he said about Ab Abram or Abraham. It says he, he believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Righteousness comes simply by faith. Righteousness, God's righteousness on anybody does not come because they do something, or they work for something, or God never said. All right, if you will do this for me, then I will give you my righteousness. I will give you eternal life. All he says is just accept it. Believe it. We don't have to pray for it. We don't even have to ask for it. All we have to do is accept it. Today or this week, I uh, read about some, some things that were being promised to people who get immunized, vaccinated. I'm going to read some to you. I, I, and It's not something you just accept. It's you have to be immunized or vaccinated for COVID-19 in order to receive some of these things or even to have a chance to get them. Now, you probably all heard about California and the, the quote-unquote lottery. I think somebody already won $1.5 million on Friday. I don't know. But um, let me just read these. <laughs> if, you, if you live in these places, if you want to go there and do it, maybe you can. You may get, if you get immunized in Indiana, you get a free box of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> or you can get a free donut from Krispy Kreme anywhere in the country if you prove that you have an immunization you've been vaccinated I'm sorry I'm gonna laugh through some of these you can get a chance a chance for cash New York California Oregon New Mexico or Ohio in Ohio New York and Delaware you can also get a chance now this is for the kids okay a chance for a full ride college college scholarship they'll pay your way through college uh, if you get your number picked but you have to prove you've been immunized you can get a free or discounted fishing licenses including lifetime hunting and fishing licenses in West Virginia plus in West Virginia uh, they're giving away two brand new custom trucks and hunting rifles and shotguns you can get tickets to museums zoos and sports games you may maybe they just give them away this is the one Owen saw 50,000 free tickets are given, being given away for Six Flags Great America in Illinois. <coughs> I suppose anybody who gets immunized and they want a ticket to Six Flags Great America, they'll get it. You can also get your vaccine at Yankee Stadium before the game and you get in free. Wow. But if those aren't enough... Office Depot and Office Max will laminate your vaccine card for free. <laughs> but you have to be vaccinated. God promises eternal life. And what does he ask for payment? What does he ask for proof? Faith. And that's nothing. That's just accepting what he said, what he does. Abraham believed what God said, and Abraham received God's righteousness like that. Faith, believing. The only incentive is eternal life. We get eternal life through faith. So many people reject that simple offer. It's, it's very sad. Jesus talks about the narrow way and the wide way and the road is wide that leads to destruction but many 
there are that go that way. And Paul said it this way when he was referring to the word of God spoken to the Jews at Antioch in Pisidia. He says, seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. It's not God that judges them unworthy. Who is unworthy for everlasting life? How many people? Well, Tim is unworthy. Who else? All of us. All of us are unworthy. But God says, I'm making the way for you. And a person just accepts what God offers. The only worth they have is the righteousness of God, but that comes by faith. No other incentive. So to believe in God for salvation, you need to believe in His Son. Today we look at the New Testament and it tells us clearly that Jesus paid our penalty and if we reject Him, uh, is what Paul says, we judge ourselves unworthy of everlasting life. So the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Abraham did that, only he didn't know the name Jesus Christ. He believed in God. Well, God promised in that same passage in Genesis chapter 15 that the children of Israel would be in bondage for 400 years. And so this is the beginning of it that we're looking at in Genesis chapter 41. And God is now, in a sense, it looks as if he is beginning the fulfillment of his promise. But I have to remember, we have to remember, God has been working all this time beforehand. Uh, Joseph is now, when he stands here to, to, to come into Pharaoh, we haven't looked at it yet. When he comes here, he's 30 years old. 30 years old. How many of you have reached your 30th year? I, for me, it's 35 years ago, okay? And Joseph has a better character than I do by 30 years old. And God is using him, but God has brought him to that point. Look at verse number 32. Joseph, when he talks to Pharaoh, he is absolutely certain of what the... the uh, the dreams meant. He says, and for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. Now that, that's a double, double, uh, double, right? Uh, so it almost sounds like it was doubled two times, which would mean it's four times, but uh, it was only doubled once in our English today. He doubled the dream. He had two dreams and the same interpretation was for both dreams. But he says, it is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. So Joseph recognized because God was with him, God had prepared him to give him the ability to interpret dreams. God had been working. And when you look at Joseph's life and all the, I'll say, bad things that happened to him, For most people, they would have just given up on God. People do it today. I, I, I can't, I've been trying to get, I'm not me, I'm saying somebody's saying, I've been trying to live right, I've been trying to follow God, but all these bad things keep, keep happening, so I just give up on God. I, he's not out there. Joseph never did that. Joseph kept his heart toward God and kept going, no matter what came in his life, and so he comes here and he sees these dreams and he knows for a fact that these dreams are going to be fulfilled. God is going to do this. Of course, he gives the interpretation of uh, seven years, because he sees seven uh, kinds, seven cattle, twice, the, uh, uh, the lean or the fat cattle, the ones that are healthy, and then the lean ones come up and eat the others. Uh, that would have awakened me. Why are cattle eating cattle? Uh, and then he had the seven good ears and the seven bad ears that ate up the seven good ears. So you have seven years of plenty, then you're going to have seven years of famine. And so he tells Pharaoh this. But Joseph had, a, had dreams himself. And I want you to go back 
to Genesis chapter 37, and, and we, I, I have never compared the two uh, instances, is that plural for instance? Uh, Joseph's dreams and Pharaoh's dreams, but look at Joseph's dream, a couple of dreams, verse number five. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. Uh, your sheaves bowed down to mine. Now, this, this, I know this is a dream. The brothers, though, in a sense, can interpret this dream. Mainly, be, I believe, because Joseph, they didn't like Joseph, and Joseph, to them, seemed like he was just building himself up. His sheep stood up, and theirs all bowed down. What did they see in this? Look at verse 8. And his brethren said, and said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Okay, so they, they interpreted that. One dream. They pictured it and what Joseph was seeing. But then he has another dream. And he dreamed yet another dream, verse 9, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And then he goes, goes on and tells his father about it. And uh, again, they interpret the dream. Are we going to bow down to you? Nonsense. Even Jacob, his dad, said, uh, and Look what he, I have to see this. Uh, the end of verse number 10, he says, Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? His mother was dead already. So what's he saying? He's saying, listen, I, I can see this, um, uh, what you're seeing, the sun and the moon, and then 11 stars. So it's the 11 brothers and mother and father all bowing down, all honoring Joseph. Joseph says all, all it tells us here about him is he dreamed these dreams it doesn't say he interpreted them the brothers and Jacob interpreted them and their interpretation was right but when was this going to happen Joseph didn't know as far as we know he God never told him but what we see in Genesis chapter 41 and so on it is fulfilled and again it's another double double dream two dreams establishing the fact to Joseph and to the brothers that they were going to bow down to Joseph see a long time how old was he here 17 years old when it talks about him in, in verse number or ch chapter 37 this is when he was about 17 years old and we know that the Bible tells us that he was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh that's 13 years, right? 13 years from that day, he's standing before Pharaoh. God is working a long time before Genesis chapter 41, and he is using J uh, Jacob and the brothers, and then he later he uses Pharaoh and the butler and others. Two dreams establishing the fact. Go back to Genesis 41 and look at verse number 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Okay, so Joseph says this, this is going to happen. I'm so sure of it. And he tells Pharaoh this. This is what's going to happen. Now, he gives advice to Pharaoh. This is what you need to do. <laughs> Can you imagine? Of course, he's, you know, God is with him, and Pharaoh already is listening. He's hearing the interpretation, and Pharaoh believes him, and so he's accepting what Joseph is saying. Choose a man to set over what I'm going to tell you. But he doesn't leave it there. And this helps establish the fact that we need others in our lives. 
Look what he says. Verse 34, let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. He says, appoint officers. He doesn't say, set up one man and let that man take care of everything. That one man, that one that he is saying, uh, this man who is discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt, that man, even though he's discreet and wise, still needs the help of others. He still needs somebody else to help him in this business. Not just because there's a lot to do. You're going to go over the whole land of Egypt and take up one-fifth of the prophets, one-fifth of the harvest, and keep it for the people later on, but uh, each year of the seven years. But he says he needs other people. Who does Pharaoh choose? But Joseph. He chooses Joseph, and then he sets up officers also. But Joseph showed himself already to be discreet and wise at 30 years of age. <laughs> we look around and we see 30 year old kids. What kids? <laughs> Being 30, 65, 30 year olds are kids. And what do we see them doing? Playing games. No offense to you young people, but uh, by the time you're 30, do something else, okay? There are wise people in the world. There are wisdom. God gives wisdom. And he has done that to Joseph. But it wasn't just Joseph. Joseph learned, probably, from his brothers. Uh, learned, not, not, uh, learned how not to be. <coughs> and he grew because God... Uh, worked in his life. Look at verse number 40. Pharaoh says, Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. <coughs> because of God's providence. We, you might read the word providence and things, and we've got to remember, don't just look at providence as just something happening. God is the one who works things out. So when we think of the word providence, put God in there. God's providence. God provides. God does the work. And so Joseph has been uh, being worked on by God. And because he is here now at this time, let me uh, ask a question. I, I'm sure most of you have been uh, on an airplane, a jet plane. And uh, uh, even if even if you drive for a long time in, in in a car, it's amazing where you can be at, in the morning, and then in the evening you're someplace so far away, hundreds or thousands of miles away. And you look back, you, if you get home in the morning in the evening, and you look back and say, "Wow, was I really there in the morning this morning?" And I'm now here. Now we we're looking at at distance. And we know because of airplanes and travel we can do, it's just boom. We're, we're amazed at how fast we are. We get someplace. Joseph didn't go from a, one place and travel a long distance. But in one day, he went from prison to being the leader under, under Pharaoh, but being the leader in the land of Egypt. Probably the most powerful, uh, the richest, country in the world at that time and this 30 year old Jewish young man becomes a leader straight out of prison <laughs> you wouldn't think how many of us would really want a guy in prison coming to be our mayor just get out of prison and now he's, he's our mayor well, I wouldn't want it if we knew who Joseph was maybe it would be okay or if the mayor was like that but we don't find that today but Joseph left prison and became I would say the prime minister over all of Egypt now in Joseph's mind you think about it the character of Joseph did he 
say, yeah, great, no problem. I will do it because I, Pharaoh was not going to make a bad choice. No, that's not, I don't think that's the way he thought. Here's the way I consider the way he thought. Me? You want me to be the leader of Egypt? That doesn't make sense, but wait a minute, think about it. Can I do it? No. No, he says, yes, I can. I'll put it that way. Yes, I can do it. Because I can't do it. Anybody get what I'm saying? I can do it because I know I can't do it. I can do it because only God can do it. Paul said, when I am weak, then am I strong. So Joseph could do it because he was still under the guidance of God and he kept himself submissive to God. So Joseph could lead the land of Egypt because he rested in God. Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I know I can do what God wants me to do because I'm trusting in him. So Joseph knew that. Go over to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Look at verse number 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him. And He shall bring it to pass. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest, where? In the Lord. And wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. He says, don't be, don't be worried about the guy who, who's prosperous and he's wicked. God's taking care of you. Wait patiently for God. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Wait for the Lord. Wait on the Lord submit ourselves to him rest in the Lord God honors those who honor him go over to first Samuel chapter 2 first Samuel chapter 2 and look at verse number 30 Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. Now he's talking to Eli and, and judging Eli because he uh, did not control his grown children, his sons. He says uh, uh, that they should walk before me forever, but now the Lord saith, be it far from me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to have you, the children of Levi, continue to be the priest and, and uh, take care of my house. He says, For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Joseph honored God. But like I said, the whole thing is, is about this, that God didn't just make Joseph the kind of man he was automatically. He didn't wait till Joseph was in prison to start working on him. He worked on Joseph before he left the land of Canaan, before the brothers put him into bondage and, and sold him into slavery. While Joseph was in Egypt, working at Potiphar's house, working, uh, going to the, the prison, being in prison for however many years, God was working on the brothers. As you read the story, you see that their hearts had changed by the time they got to Joseph. God worked in the brothers. God worked in Joseph.
putting Joseph through difficult times, and even we don't see Joseph being uh, growing to know God better, growing to be more obedient to God. We just see him as obedient when he gets into Egypt. God did work on him ahead of time. He continued working on him while he's working on the brothers. And God uses the brothers and Joseph, used Potiphar, used Pharaoh, used the butler, even the, even the baker in the prison. God used all of these people to fulfill his promise to Abraham. We might think it's a bad, not a good promise that his descendants are going to go into bondage. But it was all working God's plan out. And God used people. Used Joseph, but he used others in Joseph's life. And then he used Joseph to benefit others, his family. Helping them as they came into Egypt. Protecting them, saving them from starvation. Even though they were going to go into bondage, but they didn't know it. But it was all to work out God's plan, God's promise, so that God would get the glory. The children of Israel saw that. They saw God get the glory. We have people around us. We have people on other sides of the world that God is using in our lives. Maybe later. But He's using them to help us fulfill His will in our lives. He's using us right now. And you might not see how. But we can wait patiently on the Lord to know that as He works in my life, Someday it's going to affect somebody somewhere because it's God's will that we all help one another. Even if we don't think about it, even if we're not planning to help somebody, God uses us and He uses others in our lives. Our part is to honor God continuously. God said, them that honor me, I will honor. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for showing us this account of Joseph. We know that he's a picture of Jesus Christ bringing uh, salvation to his family. But we also know that we, real people that were used by you to bring about your will. Lord, I pray that you would help us to look at situations in our lives not as bad or good, but as opportunities to be used by you in some way in others' lives. Help us to accept the help of others, the knowledge that others are being used by you to help us out, to meet needs, to help us to grow, help us to grow to be more like you. And Lord, many times it might seem like it's a harsh thing, a hard thing to go through because others mistreat us, like Joseph's brothers did to him, like uh, the, the Potiphar's wife did to Joseph. Lord, but we know that all of these things can be used by you to fulfill your will in our lives. Thank you for all that you do in our lives. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.